it was challenging the first one because he wanted to be in the place of love. Somebody came up with the idea. And he was 100% accurate in his prediction. Plenium, iodine, or calcium, you don't have to know any of that stuff. All you have to be able to do is shoot. Welcome to the Vibrational Healing Panel. Oh, it's good to see you all again. We do this ritual a couple of times a year, as many of you know. These two have reserved seating. <laughs> a few others as well. Uh, my name is Mitchell Rabin, and uh, I've been part of this panel for many years now, as have some of the stars. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I am a uh, holistic psychotherapist, acupuncturist. I've been involved in the healing arts for many, many, many years, and uh, also host a uh, radio and a TV show every week called A Better World, on which I have been interviewing different kinds of healers and spiritual teachers and yogis and quantum physicists and some of the healers who we have right here, Star Fuentes, Judy Satori, Victor Diamond, oh my god, Victor way back when he didn't even know English. <laughs> I had to translate from Russian, and I don't know it. <laughs> um, and Victoria Hamilton, hello. Welcome from the Outback. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I'm very glad to have you all here with us today, and um, all of you especially. Usually, we do, and uh, here comes last, but not least. What do you want us to do? Love me. We do love you, Greg. It's Greg Hogue of Metaforms, carrying one with him right now. These magnificent structures based on the principles of sacred geometry. Usually we do kind of a, a round of all of the guests, and we may still, in fact, do that. But today I actually wanted to do alter things a bit, at least to start with, because I feel that there's a lot of misperception and misunderstanding about what healing is and where it originates. And I find altogether too often that people are attributing healing to healers. Now, isn't that a funny idea? And I actually want to change that around a little bit and get input also, needless to say, from the panel to revisit this uh, large and brilliant and so important idea of what is healing. And um, this will be for the sake of all to come ultimately to a place of getting in touch with one's own healing power, one's own healing capacity. So we may get guided from and even through healers who are of some renown, such as our panelists here. But to, at the end of the day, have one's own resources so available that one can pass through any number of portals and come through and the other side healed. Does that sound interesting? Okay. The game ultimately that is uh, one of self-empowerment. So with that in mind, uh, just a quick uh, sketch of each person for those of you who may not know or for those who want to know again. Star Fuentes is, uh, will you curtsy? Please curtsy for everybody. No, thank curtsy. you. <laughs> This has been an ongoing request of mine for a long time. Of uh, Star, you know, Star is a, uh, a world-renowned healer. She has been uh, working with people, literally thousands of people around the world. She has studied around the world, from indigenous cultures to more modern uh, healers in the United States, and she has been a real leader in the field of healing of so many sorts. And she's also in that same light, help to empower so many people in that same way. Judy Satori has uh, come here over the last couple of years, or has tuned in, I should say, also, for those years that she wasn't here physically, um, to uh, grace us with a gift that she discovered she had as, were you like a public relations, advertising kind of well, woman? Yes, but I, 
I was really, I originally became, I became a channel, but it really wasn't about becoming a channel. Becoming a channel was, was just preparing my body for the work that I'm now doing, which is about helping people change physically to handle fifth dimensional frequency as the earth goes through the shifts. And so I work with sound and light vibration. Beautiful. So we have, we'll get a feel for a taste of that and please ask questions. Victor, Victor Diamond, do you want to say a word about? Yeah. I was working as a healer many years and got in a science uh, of healing. And after that, uh, through the healing, I de developed theory of mechanic cellular and genetic structures. Uh, this theory explains how people get different diseases, this different sicknesses, different deviations. And also, I developed many materials, what is works, uh, sending frequency, health frequency to the body, works uh, as a battery to the body. You all lose an energy uh, from different sources, from clothes, from bedding, from dental materials. But I created uh, uh, special uh, products what is help people recharge body, body and uh, doing uh, anti-aging processes. Okay, Beautiful. we will talk later. Exactly. <laughs> Spasiba. And say a word if you would please, Victoria, about, about your work so we have some idea and then we'll get into some questions. Hello everybody. I began this work in the, the natural medicine healing um, part of, of the, the world many years ago as a naturopathic consultant and herbalist and my work grew to the gnomes that I could, um, I became a medical intuitive and could read and see what was wrong with the physical body and then connecting in where people could just merge with them and feel them, know them wherever they were on planet earth and, um, and then it became known that um, the healings could take place wherever people are whether they be um, immediately with me or in the distance or globally and then I was given a directive to channel sound and languages and so became a channel of, of sound and light and spirit and this is what my work is, is now predominantly about working in all of these spheres and um, yeah, so that's really, really happy and excited to have just arrived in New York. Thank you. Welcome. From New Zealand? Or? New Zealand. I didn't blow that one. I didn't blow that <laughs> accent. <laughs> Greg Hoog, uh, just share with us a bit about your work with metaphors and give us a little idea. <clears throat> Not a long one. <laughs> this is going to be a short one. <laughs> okay. I'm having a good time. I mean, it's that's our option as human beings to have such a wonderful experience here. And bottom line, it's like we're meant to bring through energy from source. We're spiritual beings that have taken on an animal body. So it seems that any time we deny that flow, any time we block that flow of energy, that's where disease happens. That's where difficulty happens. And so here we are learning the process all over again of how to connect to source. And what I do is I build tools to help people in that process. So at the end of the day, I'm not the one responsible for the <coughs> health. I mean, that's ultimately what you were saying. We're all facilitators, and I build tools to support people in that process of connection, in that process of allowing energy to flow through their body. And when energy is flowing, then there is health then there is consciousness. Then there is the opportunity for you to be who you are, which is that divine light. And you're just using this body for the moment. They come in, they're animal bodies, they're born, they die, they have hormones, they have physical needs, they have emotional body. That allows us to be here. But all those things, when we get caught up in them, they block the flow of energy from source. So, there's the short one. Thank you, Greg. As a physical immortalist, I take some issue with some of the conclusions you drew, but we'll talk about that another time. 
We shouldn't if you brought it up. We should oh, mention it today. We all oh, today, yes. We will here in a moment. Like to remind everybody that sex and chocolate are the best healing foods that you could ever have. Hallelujah. And amen. On that note, who wants to ask the first question? <laughs> No, really, on a, in a, well, on a, a light and serious note at the same time, if we can maintain that paradoxically, that state. Um, I do want to open this up, uh, a form. I do want to have some of you ask some questions. And, uh, but first, I would like, actually, the panel to respond. Greg began to the question that I raised to start with, which is just a frame from which we can, you know, go anywhere. So... Star, would you begin with uh, that premise that I brought forth of um, that, in a sense, we are all healers with that function more or less developed, and what the role of the person called healer plays with another. Oh, boy. This looks like it could be very wet. All right. You know, as... As a being, I am a conduit. I am a conduit for light. I am a conduit for the physical plane. I am the conduit for a spiritual plane. I come along. I touch you. I don't do anything to you. Source and you work together. Source and you work together to reconnect where you disconnected. I have a tendency to work with the physical plane a lot. Spiritual plane is wonderful indeed. And all of us are very spiritual. But when you need to take away a cancer tumor, when you need to heal an organ, the physical plane is very, very important. You disconnect from source, you're sick. You disconnect from earth, you're sick. As a healer, I show you how to reconnect, leave you alone, and then see if you can do it, feel if you can do it, and then you get your healing. Thank you. What we all need to remember is that we are energy beings living in a, a virtual sea of energy. And our thoughts are also energy. So to be our own best healer, we need to be in control of our thoughts and our emotions. And what so many of us don't realize is that these thoughts and these emotions and these beliefs are not just the thoughts of this lifetime, they're the thoughts of all our past experience, right from the time that we first incarnated as an individuated soul separate from God. And so we are a, we are a, a composite of all these distorted frequencies that, that are the result of our thoughts in all these other times and other places and other situations. Because all is really one, and we are one with all that is. And so if we are to be our own best healer, we must start with first understanding our thoughts and our emotions and learning to understand that our thoughts control our reality and our thoughts control our healing. And so the most, uh, the most important thing really is to have thoughts of love because love has the most, love and light are the most, the highest, the most uh, coherent, which is harmonizing vibrations. So when you think thoughts of love and you consciously create love within your heart space and then project that love energy throughout every cell of your body, you will go a long way towards beginning to heal yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have the volume turned up on these two mics? Sure. Can we have the volume turned up on these mics? Maybe not this one. Hello, is there uh, anyone else? Or maybe you can uh, try to speak a little louder. Please, Victor. Hi. I introduce in health frequency. Health frequency it's an uh, expression uh, vibrations of the body. Everybody have it, uh, vibrations in the body. And uh, health frequency, it's expression of different conditions of the body, of different, uh, different emotions, different uh, uh, behavior. And all this uh, became is, is a frequency. Uh, through many years of my work, I realized the uh, body it's just uh, physical 
physical connections uh, to different materials. And I realize uh, how materials, uh, what uh, you use in everyday in environment, they destroy the body. And on my website, Health Frequency website, you can read about that, how different materials destroy the body. I make animations, explain how works cellular and genetic structures, what is medicine. They don't have explanations. You can look and see on the website how uh, genetic uh, DNA structures, cells in the body works. You can read on my website how dental materials, what we use now all over the world, and how dental materials affect the body, how people get different diseases from dental materials and uh, environment materials, clothes, beddings, uh, and other materials what is involved in that. Uh, also, uh, through those years, I develop, start developing products uh, because people tell me many times how you can duplicate yourself, your effective work. And finally, I developed special gold alloy, what is really sending health frequency to the body. People who, uh, who wearing this uh, gold alloys, they have a different, uh, different changes in the body. Some sugar dropping down, some have uh, pain disappearing, stomach problems disappearing, IBS syndromes, and I'm gonna show you just pictures what we uh, take through thermographic cameras effect of our jewelry on the body. These pictures uh, show uh, uh, people who go through health frequency rings, wearing health frequency rings. This woman, 71 years old, uh, she claiming she is healthy, poor healthy, but her feet cold and uh, fingers cold. And uh, she wearing average uh, gold ring. I asked her to take out this gold ring and with thermographic camera we put uh, our health frequency gold ring. This in, in 40 minutes, 45 minutes show anti-aging processes and this is, uh, this is uh, her average ring, this is health frequency ring. I just uh, pointed not right. Uh, here is uh, she wearing average wedding band and here she wearing uh, health frequency ring. And this show how circulation improve, temperature improve in the body. This is all science. It's not about spirit. It's just effect of health frequency gold alloy. This her feet, uh, what is have very weak circulation. After wearing health frequency ring, this improved circulation. This boy, uh, 19 years old, he have allergy and have it, uh, flu. After wearing ring, this in 21 hour later, his health improved without drugs, without anything. This other boy also 19 years old. After wearing ring, also his health improved. And this uh, show just uh, the same pictures, only in a, a medical uh, colors. Uh, thermographic camera have a different programs and show in different cameras. This is before, this is after. This is before, this is after. This is before, this is after. And this uh, all show proof of our products. All right, we'll get back to that, yeah. Victor. Thank you. Um, so that was your answer to my question. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to encapsulate a little bit here um, so we can say, see the differences, the similarities and the differences between some of the points of view. And, of course, these, this is, these are just quickies, so to speak. So... Star was talking about being aligned with Source, and her as a healer is, uh, she is a facilitator, a catalyst, for helping her client get back aligned with Source, because if one is not aligned to such, they become ill, they become imbalanced. So that is what she was articulating as her role. And by the way, there are many different iterations of that, and some of that will be coming out in this panel. And Judy was talking about the role of thoughts and emotions in the healing process and how important they are and the role of love in the process. Because after all, if there's one single healing energy of all, it would be love. So that's another variation on the theme 
of what Starr was talking about when she was referring to source. So you begin to see that there's a kind of a circular nature, a spiraling nature, if you will, of understanding the nature of what healing is, something that we all just naturally embody. Victor is talking about uh, actually something reiterating something that Star was talking about. She kept emphasizing the physical. And in that domain, Victor is talking about the importance of the material, not just spiritual. In fact, he said, this is science that he's doing and, and verifying the role of, of frequencies, speci uh, specified frequencies for creating a healthier aura in the various limbs of the body. So he's using materials, essentially impregnating them with certain frequencies, again, conducting through the material realm. Is that a fair uh, assessment of what else? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Then continue. It's a very sacred time on the earth, and I'm sure that you're all very aware of this, and you are all sacred beings. And at this time, to me, it's a very simple, very pure way of finding one to be, become what part of the oneness and with source and to be connected with that. And so very much it is a time to be of the love. It's a time to be of God. It's a time to come into our hearts and into our souls. And then this is the healing. So we are evolving from that humanness and this incarnation is of such grand importance in this evolution to, to, to move from that humanness into this divine spiritual beingness of who you all are. We came here so many incarnations ago as light and into the, the physical human form. We've traveled many, many lifetimes, and then this is an evolution that's taking place to get to this time. This is the completion, the great return, it's return to the love, to the light, to the paradise energy. And this is the, the raising of the frequency to become of the light, and it's so much it is of the love. And on Sunday, a CD was recorded through me, stood there and it was like, is this to be the time? Yes, how long will this be? And the, the messages and the sounds came through and I was told then that it was to be called Sacred Sounds of Love. And to, to me this is how the healing is. It is the time of love, the time of God, to be in our hearts, to be in our souls, to leave the humanness behind. It's like a demarcation line, the humanness and our divineness. And at this time we move into that beautiful place of purity and one with the divine essence, love. Thank you, Victoria. Beautifully put. So you just remind the, the question is, what is healing? And what are you doing as someone who refers to himself as a healer? I don't refer to myself as a healer. I call myself a tool maker. That's why I'm off the hook as far as the process you were talking about. You know, it's like it puts it all back on you. It's like a hammer. You know, you wouldn't want to build a house without a hammer. But when you're done, you're the one that built the house, not the hammer. You might hit your thumb in the process. It's still not the hammer's fault. And so I think tools are very empowering to support us in this process. And the process, you know, as everyone's been pointing out, it's, it's the same understanding that it's that love that we are at our root, that source that wants to flow into this dimension. We volunteered to come into this physical body, which is the body of an animal. And just speaking to what you said, being an immortalist in, in, in the physical body, it's like you know, a dog matures at about two and it lives till about 14. That's seven times, you know, its maturation date. A human being matures at about 21, and if it lived as long as a dog, it would live to 147. Mm -hmm. So we're missing, we're missing a lot here. Whether we want to be immortal, we could at least live a lot better, a lot longer, if we were more connected to that which we come from, which is source, which is love, which is that higher consciousness. And the issue is that we volunteered to come here and the body that we've taken on has emotions that block that flow of energy. Emotions like fear and anger and 
guilt and sadness. That allows us to be here. It allows us to be in this level of density, but it also blocks the flow of that energy from coming through from source. Because love is not an emotion. Love is higher self telling you you're on the right track. When you're feeling joyful, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you're in a healthy state of being. And so it is that when we work with some of the different tools, some of the different healers that allow for this love to come through and touch your, your being, then things start realigning. Things start working as they are supposed to work, which is what is Source's intent. We just forget that intent in caught up in all the things that we're caught up in that push us around. So, basically, I think that answers you know, the question of how we all connect to higher self and that um, there are many wonderful tools in what Victor is sharing, you know, ways of working with energy and what I do is ways of creating flow in the body because I think if there's any metaphor you want to work with, it's always flow. And so as long as things are flowing, things are working, and when you break it through your emotions or through the mental stress and strain, psychologically you can break it, psychically it can be broken, spiritually there can be a level at which you choose to disconnect. So all of that must be aligned through every aspect of our being for health to happen. Thank you, Greg. You're really saying that it's a dog's life, right? <laughs> no, I'm saying that we have the opportunity oh, to go I'm beyond playing that. with you. I but know. I will see you at your 147th birthday. <laughs> Use that a promise? I remember when you started out in my basement about 20 years ago. I'll be back. Actually, it's, funny. it's a great story. I was at Greg's house in Boulder. Uh, sleeping um, on a uh, on a uh, treatment table of your wife's, and uh, he had one of these beautiful metaphors hanging above me all night, and with the use of neon. And oh my God, he does a beautiful, beautiful work. It was one of the best sleeps I've ever had. Anyway, I'd like to uh, thank you all for everything that you have said. Does anybody have any questions that you'd like to uh, put out and kind of get this uh, moving? Yes. And uh, for the sake of, um, yeah, I'll repeat it. Go ahead. What but speak the, up for. Yeah. What is the interpretation of every individual on the panel as far as the vibration of planet Earth in 2012 December? Okay. Did everybody hear that? What is uh, maybe for the sake of the uh, recording? What is the? What does each panelist think of the vibration of planet Earth uh, in 202012? Start? We couldn't start with something easy like a cold, huh? <laughs> this is uh, weird, so. Oh, right. <laughs> a cold, right? Well, 2012, how many people have heard of it? How many people have heard that the Mayan calendar ceases to exist in 2012? Okay, now imagine if you had a vocabulary that was very limited, but you couldn't say things like, psychically perceive, teleport. You couldn't say words like aura in your little glyphs. In studying and living with the Mayans for three years in my life, the world as you know will cease to exist in 2012. But listen, when we got electricity in the 1980s, the world as you know it ceases to exist. I don't think California is falling into the ocean. I believe that as humanity has worked themselves through the chakra, and we just finished the throat chakra, we can communicate instantly any place in the world where we had it. How many of you have thought of somebody in the cult? So what I believe what's going to happen to the earth is out with the petro, no more fuel, teleportation, levitation, but most, that 90% of the brain that's not used, we're going to use it. And that the Mayan and the Hopi elders and all this know that this is a time where unexplained things are happening. Things they had no words for. I believe that the vibration of planet Earth will jump radically higher. I believe 
than humanoids, well, maybe all humans, I believe that humans' vibrations will jump. Some of us slower, some of us faster. I believe that the world as you know it will cease to exist. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's great. 21st of December 2012 is the time when a cycle of great time comes to an end. It's the 25,920 year cycle of great time and as predicted by the Mayans, this is the time when the earth is going to shift into a new vibration. We know it as the fifth dimension, but in actual fact, this shift is a shift of the ages, it's a shift of the consciousness of the vibration of the earth, and it's also a shift of us into merging or coming into galactic civilization and understanding that we are galactic beings, that we are part of a, of a united network of beings from many star systems and many dimensions. And you know, I work with many beings from many dimensions, and I have for 11 years, and they, they tell me things. What they've told me recently is that on the 10th of October, just last week, there was a stargate opened. It's called the Andromedan Stargate. And what that did is it allowed a huge blast of cosmic frequency coming from the galactic core to affect the Earth. Now this has put like a, a blanket layer, like a mantle, protective layer around the Earth. But it's also increased the polarity within us. It's affecting our consciousness to increase the polarity within us of between love and fear. So people will uh, veer towards love, some people will veer towards love and love consciousness, and some people will veer more towards fear. And I believe that this is going to be reflected in world events. But 2012 is the time when the, the I believe that the magnetics of the poles, the magnetic poles will shift, and the Earth will be uh, going to a period, a three-day overlap, time will overlap period of uh, where the Earth will be released from the magnetic uh, force fields surrounding the Earth, and it will become like a void where there is no electromagnetic field. At this time, new words of creation will be spoken, I believe, believe by the Elohim, the creative aspects of God, or all that is, into this void to create a shift in the Earth's uh, polarity and the Earth's spin. And, and this is going to affect us because the Earth is going to vibrate faster, we are going to vibrate faster as a result. And so even now, a lot of the work that I do is, is starting to create a shift in the uh, circuitry, the energy circuitry of the physical body to allow for this faster pulsating fifth dimensional frequency to be actually translated into flesh and blood, uh, atoms and molecules. Uh, the organs of the body need to alter. The energy pathways of the body need to alter. And so this is, this is a lot of what I do. And everybody, all of us, have a role to play in this because the physical body, we need to shed and clear the karmic distortions, which are the thoughts and beliefs of the past, which cause disease in the body, and to be recalibrated to handle this new frequency. Because it's a shift of the ages for the earth. We just happen to be along for the ride. You know? We're on the boat. We can't get off. And we don't really want to because it's a new time of incredible peace, unity, and new understandings, a new earth. Thank you. You remind me of uh, a comment of uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson who said, we may have all come over here on different boats, but we're all in the same boat now. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Uh, you also, I just would like to quickly comment on this thought that you uh, put out, Judy, of um, a world, world events looking different based on the expressions essentially of love or fear. We know what they look like as expressions of fear. Wouldn't it be amazing to see a world event expressing love? I do think that that's what we're in for. I totally agree. Yeah. Beautiful, thanks. Victor, would you speak to uh, the gentleman's question? No, I skip this time because I'm not good at <laughs> No problem. Spasiba. Victoria? 2012. To me, this has been said and, and channeled, and, and the messages are that this is a very amazing time, a time of great magnificence, a great shift. It's the time when we truly become the love and the light. This is what we're all being readied for, and it's like this 
an amazing cycle. It's the end of a cycle. The word regenesis, the word creation. So it's a new beginning, the dawn of a new age. And so we're all being ready for, and this is the work that everyone's doing to, to heal us of the, the physical, the humanness, to shift from that into this divineness, into these light bodies, carrying so much more light and love, raising the vibration, the frequency of our being in order to be ready for what is to come. And, and it is all about love and light and, and a new age. So it's, it's what we've all been prepared for forever and ever, and, and it's, it's a new age. So it's, it's a really sacred and, and to be a very divine time. It's like the return to being of the divine energy. So it's something that in togetherness we all work in the oneness, the separation, the veils of that will dissolve. And in this, it's connected this, that it becomes yeah, a very much a time of light and love. And so being shifted into this, this, these light bodies, into this sacredness, into this special, simple purity and readiness for this. So 2012 is, is something that we've chosen to be here at this time. We all have special jobs. We all have sacred places here in placement. We're all being linked together in this oneness. And together we can we can make it so special in us. It's a divine time of light, like a new star is born. Mm. Beautiful. It's always dangerous to pick out a time you might miss what you're going through right now, <laughs> because it's happening now. The 2012. <laughs> the shifts, the energies that are going on. I mean, why do you think Wall Street is doing a dance? Why do you think the world is going a little crazy at times? And it's your choice what you're going to do with it. This is opportunity. Always as spiritual beings, everything is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to go inside and find what's real. Because this is always changing. And that's what I was saying before. It's like things grow and things live and things die. But inside, this is where you need to connect and this is where you will always find the strength, the love, the focus, the intelligence to create what you need to create at the moment. And indeed, there's a lot of change going on right now because frequencies are increasing. That's why we've chosen to incarnate now. I mean, this is where the party's really happening. And that's why we're here. And that's why it's such an opportunity to choose between what is the truth and what is, when I say truth, I mean love, I mean consciousness, I mean of a higher order, and what doesn't serve that. And when frequencies start to change, when frequencies increase, it really brings out what doesn't work in your life and puts you in touch with what does work. Because that's your choice, to choose what works. Because Lord knows you're going to be shown what doesn't work, so don't hang out with it. Move toward the love and the consciousness. And, you know, as far as an exact date, I've spent time with Mayan elders who said, we always celebrate the spring equinox, not the winter solstice. And you know, they're upset with Major Jenkins saying it's uh, December 10th and it's really going to be a different day. Oops. So, it's kind of like, bottom line, it's still... Did you want to jump in and say be something? Be here. Okay. In other words, be here now, right? Yeah, not be here then. <laughs> so, you do need to be in the moment because it's shifting. And something else that's really fun to share is because I work with geometry. You notice how we always say 2012. We don't say 2012, we're 2012, add them together is 32. 32 is one of the most divine numbers that exist. I mean, in this form alone, there are 12 points, and in the center are, is the icosahedron, and there are 20 faces on the icosahedron. So this is 2012. So many of the geometries I work with are 20 and 12, and the way they work together. When you work with the cube of Earth, which is the cube of space, which is this physicality. As you move into the higher dimensional geometry, which is a dodecahedron, to move from a cube to a dodecahedron takes a little hip roof that has a 32 degree angle. The energy that comes in through an enlightened human being is an energy movement up through the top of the head that's 32 degrees. 
2012, you're going to see why does water freeze at that rate? Why do, why does the Mason, Freemasons, why do they have the 32, you know, 32nd degree before they get to the final 33rd degree? There are many places where you see its metaphor. Very little is spoken of truth in this dimension. Actually, there's nothing of truth in this dimension. It's all signposts toward the truth. It's all metaphors talking about something greater. So 2012, this thing that's happening, as like Star was pointing out and dancing up and down, it's just, it's metaphor. It's all something that is simply saying there's something greater happening. And the way you take that metaphor into your life, the way you uniquely interpret all of these words will be what's important for you. And to understand that this is a time when there is more support than ever before. Because these higher frequencies are allowing, allowing beings of light, the beings that we all connect with on the higher dimensions, can more easily come through into this dimension. And it's not like they're here just to help us. We're here helping them bridge this gap. They need to become more into the physical. We need to reach into the non-physical to allow that bridge to be built. And that's our opportunity. We're all evolving together. This is about evolution of spirit. This is about evolution of soul. And we have a nice metaphor to help propel the whole process. But after December or spring 2012, 2013, if we're expecting a lot, we're just going to watch more and more of the same. And inside is where we need to be through the whole process. Thank you, Greg. Talking about things bubbling from the non-physical into the physical, I can feel my dear Judy beginning to bubble. <laughs> well, thank you. And I, I want to add to what Greg was saying. See, and I, I some of you, most of you will know that I'm a channel for many energies, and in particular the Elohim and many councils of light. Many councils of light. And in this particular instance, I'm being nudged by the Galactic Council. Now, Greg is absolutely right when he says that it's happening now and it is happening now. And in fact, this shift, the shift of the ages has been really beginning, it's been, it began around 1987 with the harmonic convergence. And it's particularly since the year 2000 that's been the frequencies, the uh, energy emissions from the Galactic Center have been increasing in intensity. This has created changes to our weather patterns, what scientists call space weather. Um, and this is a very real thing. All the planets in our solar system are altering their weather patterns or their, their changing in frequency, not just the Earth. So this is a, a shift which is affecting our entire galaxy, if not other galaxies in, in, in the cosmos. So, as Greg also said, there are many beings of light who are supporting us through this process. And now with this opening of this Andromedan Stargate on the 10th of October, this is heating up. Okay? So I just be nudged by the Galactic Council who want to say something to you. If that's appropriate right now. In English? I think in English. <laughs> I will translate. <laughs> This, at this time, as you understand, there are changes to uh, this is to the to the economy, to the people, changes in the politics, many changes that are occurring for people and in their living of their lives. These changes are an outward reflection of something which is happening at the core, and the core is the core of the earth, and what. You may not understand, many people may not understand, that the core of the earth is like a diamond. It's like a, a diamond a, of very high frequency. Um, the frequency of the diamond is being tuned by the emissions from the galactic core, just as we are being tuned. And we also have diamond uh, configuration in our bodies because we have something called the pineal gland in the brain, which is like a crystal chip, just like a computer has a crystal chip. Now, as these emissions from the galactic core are coming into our atmosphere, the crystal chip within us is being tuned. This is altering our understanding of who we are on a spiritual level. So we are opening to our, our higher soul aspects, 
to our understanding that we are more than who we think we are, that we are not just a, a being who lives and dies in this one life and this is it, that we are connected into all that is, into unity consciousness, and we also have the capacity to reach up with our mind now, with this opening of the Andromedan Stargate, to reach up with our mind and connect with the energy powerhouse of God or spirit and to actually with our intention help ourselves by tuning our own body and I'm working a lot with sound vibration to do this but we can all create the correct healing tones for ourselves and use these tones to tune the atoms because remember the atoms are at the core of atoms and molecules are at the core of our being they are not physical structures they are energy structures they are vibrating energy, and every atom uh, which creates molecules, which creates organs and systems of the body, is tuned to a specific vibration. We can actually, with our own sounds, just like our own singing, tune the atoms and molecules of our own body into the perfect resonance, because that's all that is really required. We have lost, because of something called the fall, we have lost our connection with higher dimensional frequency. We have coming into our body uh, feeder lines of light called axiotonal lines. And these axiotonal lines come into the acupuncture points. They have been truncated or cut off many, many years ago, and now they're being returned to us. It was always written at the end of this age, the keys to the kingdom of heaven would be returned to us, and we would be returned to perfected bodies. And this is what's now occurring. And you know, we, we touched on immortality, yes, and certainly age retardation, because we now are reconnecting and relearning the capacity to be all that we are. And so, this is really the message from the Galactic Council right now, mm. is to hold that understanding that we are in a time of absolute transition and absolute change, and much more than we have ever dreamed possible is now coming to pass. Thank you so much, I want to just let you know that um, not right now, but coming up by the end of this session, we will be taking a water break with Nancy Burson. Nancy has uh, come up with, has been contacted in a certain way to bring us all a form of healing water that's very special. So we'll get to that before we uh, all conclude today. And It'll be something to certainly uh, look forward to and wet your whistle, of course. So, I feel like we should do some form of meditation. Would you be interested, Star, in walking us through? No. You would not? No. Is there anyone on the panel who would like to? I can. This. One you are feisty, aren't you, Star? Yeah. <laughs> I am. Just saying, Whoa. close your eyes. And your body. <laughs> so, use meditation for that. We'll get to that too. This one of powerful images, what is going to help people uh, who are in the room feel much better. And, uh, here is uh, hell frequency, what is uh, recorded hell frequency, what is bringing down inflammatory processes in the body. Also, we added uh, powder of special alloy, patented alloy, and a piece of, of uh, strips of the gold, what is sending hell frequency to the body. I'm going to tape it to the window, and everybody who's sitting in, here in the room will get uh, some piece of hell frequency. It's like a charging body. Okay? Thank you. Through color, in other words, Victor. Mm -hmm. Through color. No, it's true, true frequency what is recorded in the Yeah, pictures. I know, but coming through the color. Yeah, colors expression, expression, yes, expression, different type of frequencies. Beautiful. Thank you. Do we have uh, some cosmic scotch tape? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So would you all like some healing? Yes. Yeah? Okay. That's always been a, a part of what we do here in these panels. So uh, I wanted to check in on the eagerness of such. Mrs. Fuente. Por favor. Say 
¿Cómo no, papacito? <laughs> Okay, who'd like a healing? Come forth, you. Don't be shy. Okay, what's your name? Jackie. What's the problem? My adrenals don't work well. Can you feel them right now? No. Okay, then how are we going to know if we healed you? <laughs> All right, everybody take a deep breath. And what we're going to do is work on is we're going to work on a high green yellow. High green yellow activates, works with her, gets it going. Everybody take a deep breath. Breathe. One more. Three. Okay, what's different? I don't feel she can't feel it. She couldn't feel it in the first place. <laughs> Thank you. Round of applause. <laughs> Who has something that hurts they can feel right now? Come forward, sir. I have a regular heartbeat. Oh, baby, I, you want me to work on your heart? Yeah. Can you hear it? Yeah, I, I can feel it. You no, know, you'll feel, feel it. it. Feel it. Feel it. I'm going to feel it for you, too. I love this job. Everybody take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. Okay, now what's different? It's regular. It's regular. A round of applause, please. Who has a lump, a bump, or a tumor? You in the back. Come on, hurry up here. You, lady, the one looking behind you to see who I'm putting at. No, no, the other one. All right, come forward. Healing doesn't have to take forever. It can, but it doesn't have to. What's your name? What? Diane. Diane Shy. What? What's your problem? I just smacked my arm. You have a lump in your arm. Can you feel how big it is right now? I can feel it hurts. It hurts? All right, everybody help me with this. Give the energy to the healer. Give energy to me. We're going to use a soothing sea green. Ooh, soothing sea green. Soothing sea green. Boy, you are so shy. Ooh, soothing sea green. Okay, what's different? Oh, that's better. Round of applause. One more. Come forward, sir. She loves the men. Uh, hey, Why not? just because I'm on a diet doesn't mean I can't look at the men. <laughs> Hello. I had a wound that was stitched up, and it left a bump. A, a wound that left a bump that was stitched up. It was stitched up. Let me it feel it. It shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be there. Can you feel it? I feel it. Yeah. Feel it right now, so you know its exact size. All right. This is easy, people. Help me. Connect with God. Connect with Spirit. We're going to connect Him. And we're going to shrink this bump right here. We're going to shrink it. It's getting smaller. It's getting flatter. We're going to shrink this bump, shrink this bump, shrink this bump, and shrink this bump. Touch it, please. Got a little smaller. A little less? Yeah. Okay, round of applause. And <laughs> This is what can be done in a few seconds. What do you think an hour's worth of healing would do for you? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Who, uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll take the next round to, for you all to share your wizardry. A, we know this connectedness and this oneness, and, and I just said to Judy that um, as she speaks, it's like I can hear the, the words and the messages and the, the words, the same words, the same language in the English, but also Judy and I speak the same other languages. And I just got a message given to me that Judy and I would do something together and to raise the frequencies and, and bring you into that place and space of love. And then Judy bent over to me and said, do you think we should do something together? And I went, mm, that's just what I was also Very told. <laughs> <laughs> and we're from, we're both from New Zealand, so we're from the same place. <laughs> so your galactic accent is the same. <laughs> so what I feel we're doing now is that because of the opening of this new Stargate that I've been talking about, it's now possible for us to be much better healers of ourselves. But in order to do this, we have to have the right energy circuitry to be able to pull the energy through into the physical bodies 
that will help to alter the cells and clear distortion. And this is coming through axiotonal lines, and we've both worked with axiotonal lines for years, but this is different. This is actually working with axiotonal lines on a whole new level, because it's only now with the opening of the Stargate that the magnetics of the higher dimensions are totally in sync with the magnetics of our own uh, energy fields and the cells and the organs and the systems of the physical body. It's like the grids are connected, and so with the right words being spoken, the right energies, sound, light, vibration coming through, um, a lot more healing can be accomplished. Now, Victor also is working too with sound, color, vibration, it's all the same thing. So it's all energy. I feel, I feel the out there. I'm wondering uh, if, Greg, do you have your raw uh, candle that you use for that? Or? Um, or you didn't bring I could run, you mean you want me to turn down the lights and broadcast energy through it? That was a thought, but if you're not prepared for it, I don't um, want to... I had hoped to bring it, but I was rushing late because I was dealing with people. I it's your call, I but can spin it's the, just such a beautiful yeah, effect, the energy you know, and uh, would, I think, complement what Victoria and Judy are about to do. I just you want, want to, to turn the uh, lights down a little bit toward at least You know, this will be working with just the regular light, but we'll okay. be spinning energy through Just this. for the sake of the general feng shui. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you all just to open your being, open your heart, open your consciousness, open yourself to the energy that Victoria and I are going to bring through. Um, we're going to work first with the axiotonal lines, I believe, which are the feeder lines of light into the acupuncture points of your body, which will allow for you to, with your own intention and your own sounds, access healing from uh, higher dimensions. So it's connecting in a kashabriha. Open your cells, so kashabriha. Yakra, 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 Yakra,
Krishna 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 Krishna
And so at the end of three days, there was quite a collection of them. They're now being studied in two countries. Uh, we don't have DNA results yet, but we do know that they've been spect spectral analyzed, and they're found to be very highly electromagnetic. Who would have thought? <laughs> and, uh, and what their purpose is here is to really create human health or, and redo human health. And so this is, this is a gift from the extracelestials, and it really truly is here to change our health, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, and it heals, it heals pathogens, it can, it can heal cancer. It also does very well with addictions, uh, especially alcohol addiction. Um, I hear that it does incredible things, uh, diminishing pain in childbirth. And uh, my son calls it spiritual heroin. <laughs> it's kind of an awakening. It's kind of an awakening, and it's their light. It's, it's what we need to bring into ourselves so that we can be homo luminous, so that we can be part of their light. So, uh, so when you take this, and I, I'll, I'm giving out samples here, uh, you also can see how you feel after you take it, but it's, it's quite an interesting response that a lot of people have to it. And this is free. This is a free gift. And the other way that it keeps on giving is that you pass it from person to person. And so I have a bottle of it. I have some other little tiny bottles of it, and all you need is about a half a teaspoon to have your own water. And so this is the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you. So in other words, you can just put a drop in yeah, or a half a teaspoon half into a, a larger volume of water. Right, and a clean, a clean bottle of water. And I would suggest that you get um, droppers from a pharmacy. It, it can either be in glass or in plastic that you can keep it. And as long as you keep it clean by just, you know, dropping it on your wrist or, or dropping it in, um, in your palm and just licking it off so that you don't get the dropper full of germs, then you have, and then you can give it out as much as you make it. The rule is one to one, which is great. And so you can add it to a really big <coughs> vessel of water and still keep making it. All you, all you, ha all you need is uh, about a half a teaspoon left to make more. Thanks, that's wonderful. Thank you. <coughs> Nancy's the author of a couple of books, right? What are the names of the books? Lineage. Lineage. Which is, exactly. which is about my dream. Yes, exactly. Beautiful. Do any of you remember the uh, kombucha mushroom? Yeah? Do you remember when it first came to New York? <laughs> uh, we, uh, those of us who had it initially would um, make a pot of uh, kombucha tea and then give the mushroom that would generate to somebody else and we just kept going and going and going before it became commercialized. <laughs> but it's really great and it's that kind of spirit that I think we need more of, you know, as we go on. So in our last few minutes, I want to uh, just invite any of you to speak and say whatever it is you'd like to share with the audience. We're at a very interesting time, as keeps being reiterated here, and uh, we're. This is a time that's been prophesied for so long, and you know we spoke a lot about 2012, but uh, Greg brought our attention to now, and we see really interesting things happening with the banking system collapsing and the political system going through some really interesting um, morphing and we all see in ourselves we're going through various processes as our own belief systems are also crashing down those things that we believed in in one way or another or what we felt as an experienced as solid ground is really not so solid as we thought it's really interesting it's like if we don't put ourselves into the flow we're going to be put into the flow so um, because this is a time of major transition and transformation for all beings, I believe, on the planet, uh, it would be really nice to hear what all of you might have to say about how we can best be present with 
the current vibrational uh, movement that's occurring. Healing starts right now. Get over it. You can choose to stay in your illness. You can choose to stay in your patterns. You can choose to bemoan yourself. Get over it. Choose for joy. Choose happiness. Choose an energy. When that energy starts flowing through you, the healing begins. Part of our illness, part of our disease is default choices. We'd rather not choose. We'd rather be sad. We'd rather not be happy because if we're happy, somebody would take it away from us. Choose daily. Choose frequently. Choose a love. Don't hang on to the other stuff. It taught you a lesson. Good. Leave it alone. Move on. Well, I think well, if we're, we're to become our own best healer, what we most need to understand or do is understand that if we don't feel good, there's something wrong. And if we don't feel good, there's obviously distortion or energy, inharmonious energy resonating within our being somewhere, whether it's in our thoughts or our consciousness, or whether it's karmic miasmic distortion in the cells or the DNA or within every aspect of our energy and anatomy, then we need to look at this and we, we can heal it with love. We can also heal it with tuning our physical body, uh, with actually using our intention to reach up and to just make sounds that heal. Um, but I think you know, I think we really have to understand that we we have many different healing modalities. We have tools, we have um, what Victor's doing, we have many people who are healers, but the real source of our own healing is ourselves. And it's our thoughts, it's our consciousness, and it's how we operate in our lives. And that is how we best heal looking at those aspects. Thank you. Great. So what we hear from both of these two is being oriented in the moment, dropping all old belief systems of illness and having to be a certain way and being open to joy and being open to love is the best way of being at this time of turbulence. Isn't that cool? Hmm. Do we need turbulence in order to receive that invitation? Or could we have just taken that invitation ourselves? Victor. Okay, tomorrow I'm actually at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, here. And uh, people who wanna get healing from this tool and also get knowledge about health frequency can come. I invite him and see my lecture. Also, we have a different talk tomorrow morning. Yeah, we have a different images for different reasons. What is uh, help body flow in different organs and really regenerate uh, different. Uh, part of the body. You can see on this floor in the book section, Alan has uh, those images. You can get and recharge your body all the time in a packet. You can have it in the home. You can have uh, images what is uh, naturalized electrical devices in the, in the house and the effect of electrical devices. This is what you can get. Okay. Thank you, Victor. It's time to be, it's a time to surrender, it's a time to let go, it's a time to, to move from that humanness and just to be in the love and to be with God. My little boy Sebastian is nine years old and he's a channel that carries this angelic energy and he connects in with anyone and everyone he heals. And he said to me recently, Mummy, it is a time of God and his son Jesus Christ. It is a time of love and light on the earth and this is where the people must be at this time. And then his voice changed and he said, and you must go out and you must give these messages to the people. And so it is indeed, it is a time to reconnect with God and his son, Jesus Christ. It is a time of love, a time of light, a time to be in that. Thank you, Victoria. I'm going to come up and work with you. <laughs> because what I wanted to show was just how difficult it is to do all of this stuff. You're familiar with muscle testing, right? So, familiar with muscle testing? I Can we have we five? Have three minutes. We'll take three we minutes. Have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so be strong. Good. So, now let's talk about what's going on with Wall Street, okay? 
All right, and then there's the war in Iraq. And there's pollution on the planet. You know, it's like all this stuff, whether we like it or not, it makes our body weak. It disconnects us. And so that's where, here, just hang on to like one of these pendants. And now when we're talking about uh, Wall Street and the war in Iraq and pollution on the planet, you see that connection is that energy source coming through from your heart, from your soul. So there's a lot of nice words about how you're supposed to always connect there, but all it takes is someone going by, discussing what's going on with pollution on the planet, or we watch TV or the newspaper headlines. All of these things disconnects us. The EMFs that come in disconnect us. The pollution on the planet disconnects us. And in short, human beings are not strong enough right now and connected enough to allow this energy to come through without a lot of support, without help. And that's what I see these tools help to do. Then you put your focus on what it is you want to manifest. Because even that, what is it you want to manifest? Do you want your show to go out nationally? Would that be a nice thing? Internationally. Internationally? <laughs> Let's make a positive statement. I did this just two weeks ago with Louise Hay. She was much fun. Okay, be strong. Okay, let's make a positive statement because that's what's important. Your show is picked up internationally and received enthusiastically all over the world. Give me that pendant. <laughs> okay, your show is picked up internationally and enthusiastically all over the world. And I'm pushing real hard. You see, it's, Hallelujah. it's now what it means is, is simply that you need to connect inside and then you manifest on the outside. Beautiful, brother. Thank you. Listen, thank you all for coming. So appreciate it. Bless you.